everyone, my name is Alona Rose and I'm here today playing another game that is on Twitch's banned list. This game is called Secure Angels and it is about... I'm not exactly sure. It has anime girls. And it's supposed to be a visual novel type game. So, I don't know if any of you have played visual novel type games. A lot of them are like, even like the Walking Dead games I'm sure a lot of you have played. Those are technically visual novel type games. Like. A lot of it's choice-based and reading a lot of text and not really action. This one this one probably doesn't have any action in it, like action scenarios or sequences, um, so it's probably just going to be me picking things to say. So I'm not really sure what we're getting ourselves into, and I'm, we'll probably figure out why it was banned as well, or maybe not, but... Let's try this anyway. Anime babes! <laughs> Alright, here we are. Got a beautiful background title screen thing going on here. And look, there's a gallery too. Well, you know, we're just gonna start this. See what this is all about. I should probably move myself. There. I hope. Every night, I have the same dream. Every night. I'm always brought back to this place without fail. And then every morning, I'll wake up with no memory of this place at all until the next time I fall asleep. Not a single night has went by without my con consciousness being dragged into this abyss. This realm is devoid of light, so much so that I can't even see my hand in front of my face no matter how desperately I wave it. The concept of sound is just as absent, my steps silent and my distressed cries swallowing by the bordering darkness as quickly as they had left my mouth. I'm in a bleak, barren wasteland of nothingness. Spending any prolonged amount of time here begins to make me doubt even my own existence. Yet, despite feeling suffocated by a striking absence of anything, I know I'm not alone. Something is watching me. Stalking me from the shadows. I can't say for sure what it is, but every once in a while I'll catch sight of something from the corner of my view. A pair of burning bright eyes fixated purely on me. They hate me. Despise me. There's an overwhelming sense of animosity radiating from whoever they belong to. I know they want more than to lash out and attack me, but something is holding them back, a force they truly despise, invisible chains that bind and restrict them from the one thing that is on their mind. At first when I began dreaming about this place, the eyes were distant, like glimmering stars, but with each passing night the eyes seemed to inch deep, ever closer and shine ever brighter. I think whatever is forcing... Uh, I think whatever force has been holding them from me is, be is beginning to fade. What will happen when these eyes reach me? I shudder to think. I know it's just a dream, so I shouldn't be afraid, but everything I experience here is so vivid. None of the usual murky haze that shrouds such dreamlike environments seem to exist here at all. I have perfect clarity. I can feel I can feel the stagnant, freezing air all around me, even though it, even oh my gosh. Enough to incite a shiver out of me every once in a while. Since I'm so used to this dream, I know how it'll end. I'll wade through the darkness for what seems like an eternity, never finding anything until the morning finally comes and pulls me out of this nightmare. At least, that was how it usually ended. Something is different tonight. Those hateful burning eyes that always kept just out of sight before... I'm suddenly confronted by them. Never before have they been so close. Never before have I stared straight back into them. Their narrow, piercing gaze roots me to the spot, and a shooting pain surges through me. I can't move. I can't breathe. And then, from out of the darkness, a crooked smile spreads just as sinister as the eyes. So close. I can practically taste the freedom. It won't be long now. Enjoy the peace while you can, boy, for your days are numbered. Oh, so I finally figured out one thing. I'm a boy and I have weird dreams. <laughs> so I guess there's two things. And then everything shall change. Okay. 
Oh, look. Got a cool bedroom here. Ugh. My head is killing me. These morning migraines are the worst. They are. They are the worst. Every morning without fail, I wake up to a sensation. Not I'm like, oh my god, this music is so loud. I need to turn this down. Just a tad. Every morning without fail, I always wake up to a sensation not unlike my skull being pounded by jackhammer. Thump, thump, thump. It's almost like a heartbeat. I feel like my head is going to split open. It's weird though, because even though the pain is so intense, it never lasts long. In the space it takes me to get up and head for school, the, the pain usually is usually reduced to just a dull throb at the back of my skull by then. So it isn't too much of a hassle in the grand scheme of things, but it certainly isn't a fun way to wake up. I just find it, it odd how consistent it seems to be. Anyway, even pondering these weird mysteries, enough, enough pondering these mysteries. It's time to tackle the day! After a moment of wrestling my, with my blanket, I swing my legs around and drag myself out of bed. Quick look at my bedside clock tells me it's still early. Too early. If I had it my way, the world wouldn't start until at least a good way into the afternoon. But sadly, life is, just isn't that wonderful. Pulling back the curtains to let the light flood into my room, I suppress the urge to let out a hiss, almost blinding myself in the process. Too bright! That's like me every day. Every day. The rest of my time getting ready is spent fighting with my uniform, a tie becoming all the more problematic to put on when you're half asleep. Oh god, I think I've actually got my hands stuck in it! Almost choking myself to death in the most pathetic fight ever, I finished putting on the tie, the rest of my uniform complying peacefully with me. Unable to find a comb, I just I settle for just flattening my hair down with my hands. Blinking into the mirror, I left, I'm left staring back at someone with messy black hair. Eh, it's close enough. Somewhat dressed and somewhat ready, I stumble out of my room, my legs still not fully awake. Uneven steps carry me dangerously down the stairs, and I soon emerge into the kitchen. I'm greeted by silence. The kitchen is empty. A familiar scene for me. My parents are what you might call workaholics. Basically, they spend more time at their respective jobs than they ever do here. I only ever get to catch them during the evening while we're eating, and then everyone is off to bed and the cycle repeats. Don't get me wrong, I understand that they have to work in order to keep us living comfortably, so I don't hate them for it. It just gets, I don't know, lonely? Oh well. There's no use moping about it. It's been like this for years, so I don't know why I was getting all emotional about it now. The plus side of them not being around is that I quickly had to learn how to cook for myself. It's amazing how fast you can adapt to that sort of stuff when you're starving. I don't think I have enough time for anything fancy to eat for breakfast, so I'll just settle for toast. You can never go wrong with toast. No, not really. Okay, you might be able to go. You might be able to go wrong with toast. I have sudden traumatic flashbacks to when the toaster erupted into flames. Oh God. Ah, uh, what a day that was. But I've learned from my mistakes now. It won't happen a second, uh, third time. <laughs> Having devoured the only slightly charred toast, I sling my bag over my shoulder before start starting for the front door. I give the empty ass one last look before opening the front door. It's kind of depressing to have no one to say goodbye to, but again, this has been the same for every day, every weekday morning since forever ago. The sun is shining high in a cloudless sky, birds are chirping overhead, waves of students are passing by, happily chatting with one another as they all make their way to school. It's all so horrible. <laughs> I'm not so much of a morning person, so I can't even begin to fathom how everyone can be so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed right now. I'm the same way. I can't do it. I mean, it's taking all of my willpower just to be able to put a foot in front of the other without just crumpling to the ground. I just have to hope the breakfast kicks in and gives me the energy I need before I'm forced to literally drag myself through the school gates. While keeping my head down and my eyes glued to the ground, as I soldiered on, I suddenly noticed that the vibrant atmosphere from before is gone. Silence is completely taken over. My step's the only thing making any noise. The air is still. Huh. It's a bit strange. Bringing my head up, I'm met with an unsettling sight. The street is deserted. No students. No cars. And even the cheerful chirping of the birds is gone. What? I hurry on forward, hoping to at least run into somebody. Anyone. 
Even the sun's golden rays seem muted. The world tinged in dreary tones. But there still isn't a cloud in the sky. Okay, this is definitely starting to freak me out. I need to just... A splitting pain shoots through my head, stopping me in my tracks. Like a searing poker being thrust through my skull. A headache? Now? Nothing is making any sense. Desperately trying to keep myself upright as I clutch my, a hand to my head, I stagger forwards. Unlike the headaches from before that gradually died down, this, o this one only seems to be getting worse. Thump. 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 It won't stop at all. I'm brought to my knees. I can hardly think straight, my head threatening to explode at any moment. And then, through gritted teeth and a pained expression, I see it. Something that shouldn't exist. Yet yeah, clearly does as um, as oh my god. Yet yeah, clearly does as confirmed my own terrified eyes. A monster. That's the only word that can come to my scrambled mind. A hulking grotesque mass of flesh, gnarled fangs and red slitted eyes seething with hate. The closest thing that I can relate to it would be a dog, but no dog I know of is three times the size of me. It's form practically eclipsing the sun. It snorts with flared nostrils, something like steam being exhaled out of it. Exhaled out. Wow. <laughs> Given its tense stance and the fact that it's blocking my way, I can only assume it's here for me. But why? What the hell is it? Where did it come from? What does it want me? What is it? A million and one questions race through my head, but I doubt I'm going to get any answers from this. This. Thing. There's only one thing I can do when presented with such odds, and that's to... Stand my ground or flee. I'm not gonna let this asshole do anything. We're gonna stand our ground. Of course. I don't know what the hell this thing is, or why it suddenly appeared before me, but I'm not gonna let it take me down without a fight. Ignoring the pain that threatens to consume my skull, I straighten myself up and stare it back into the hateful eyes of the beast. And then, tightening a fist, I lash out like lightning, my fist connecting with its head cleanly with a solid impact. Take this, foul beast! Wham! Dot dot dot. Okay, no. Bad idea. That did nothing. In fact, it looks even angrier than it did before now. All I've managed to do is bruise my own fist. I hope I haven't broken anything. I reel back from my brutal attack, giving the first, giving the fist in question a good shake. It still stings. Ow. Now what do I do? My blazing surprise attack was met with a com with complete indifference, and now I think it's too late to run. As the creature is gearing itself up for a charge, its front like digging into the ground. This might have been a mistake. I try to take. <laughs> I try to turn tail and begin running. Uh, but the beast kicks off the ground and straight towards me, and there's nothing else I can do. I race myself as best as I can for the inevitable bone-shattering impact. Right before the beast can connect with me and bring my life to a grisly end, a dazzling radiant light floods my vision, engulfing both me and the monster. The beast stops in his tracks, a guttural cry escaping, escaping it before it vaporizes before my eyes. What? What the hell just happened? Jeez, that was a close one. Are you alright? A cheerful voice chirps. A welcome sound after the terrors of that. That thing. Don't talk to him! We have to leave before- And then another voice that's less cheerful. In fact, they sound angry more than anything. The light soon fades, revealing my saviors. Though, this is definitely the last thing I was expecting. Two girls, roughly my age, stand before me. I blink several times before I scrub my eyes, hoping that things might make a little more sense. This can't be real. I'm having more trouble believing these girls are actually standing before me than I did the monster. Wielding weapons and costumes straight, to, straight out of a fantasy book, it's all a bit much for my brain to attempt to process. Kenta, what? What the heck was that? Question, question, question mark. It says, a shadow. The more cheerful of the two simply says that to me. Her stance, relaxing some. Huh? Kenta says. Was that supposed to explain everything? I glance down at my feet where my own shadow stretches, but the girl bursts into a giggle. 
Now you're in shadow, silly! The thing we just took care of, which you're welcome for, by the way, is what we call a shadow. The physical manifestation of all the hatred and negative emotions that might lurk in one's heart. Normally they're not so aggressive during the day, though. It was really out for you. We're usually pretty good at nabbing them before they get to you, but this one completely took us by surprise. So what, he has guardian angels? I guess? Of negative emotions? I need these. And they're cute too. I'm happy we got here in time. You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine, but... As if things were bad enough that we had to reveal ourselves to him. Now we're just casually blabbing away things that no normal person should have a right to know. Have you lost your mind? I'm cut short by the more aggressive looking of the pair. His expression, his expression had grown darker and darker as the cheerful one had spoken. Looking like she's unable to take it anymore, she exploded, causing both of us to jump. Ah, but he looks so confused. And now that he's seen one of the shadows firsthand, don't you think it's a little too late for us to quietly slip back into the shadows? Her eyes narrow into a frightening glare. It's clear she isn't happy, but I don't think that she has anything to counter that. See? You worry too much. We only tell him what he needs to know, nothing more, nothing less. That beat girl brings her attention back to me, a sparkle in her eye. Right, so Kenta, where are we? Uh, we were... wait. How do you know my name? Huh? Oh. Whoops. She puts a hand to her mouth as if to try and take back the words. Questions continue to pile up and I still haven't gotten any answers. You idiot! Whap! <laughs> the serious one wraps her fist against the other's, he the other's head who sticks her tongue out in a sort of teehee my bad kind of way. <laughs> it's cute. So you guys know me? I've never seen them in my life. And given how they look, I definitely think I would have remembered them. Well, we don't know you personally, we've been watching you over you for a while now. You've become quite the point of interest recently, you know. Me? What the heck did I ever do to get so much attention? As far as I know, I'm just an average student who lives an average life, doing average things. Now, after this, I guess I can't really call my life average anymore. Mm hmm. Can't really go into details because, you know, top secret and all, but let's just say it's not in our best interest for you to fall into the wrong hands. You wouldn't believe how much effort we've been putting into keeping you safe, you know? Actually, I'm kind of relieved we finally get to meet so you can finally appreciate all of our hard work. She beams at me, le leaning in perhaps just a little bit too close. Come on. Don't you lie. I- she's throwing so much at me here, I can hardly think straight. Just who the heck are you guys? Hmm. She falls into deep thought, her nose scrunching up. I guess she's choosing her words carefully as to avoid another brutal assault from her partner. Think of us as your guardian angels, okay? Saying that, she gives her bout a flourish and it shatters between her fingers. Her bow. Her bow. Not her bow. Bow. Moments later, the shattered pieces of the bow begin to gather behind her. The shards piecing back together rapidly until they finally form a pair of wings on her back. The wings, while not strictly attached to her, at least seem to function as, a, as they sway in the breeze and give off a glimmer every now and then. Wait, are they literally angels? Let me get this straight. To start from the beginning, that thing that attacked me, that monster you call those shadows. Yep. And these shadows have supposedly been hunting me for a while now. Mm-hmm. Because apparently if they catch me, it'll be bad. Bad. For unspecified reasons. Yep. Really bad. Any guys, whoever you are, I've been combating them for, from the shadows to keep me safe from harm. She nods enthusiastically. It looks like I've just got a grip on what this whole thing is, even if it's a little sparse on the details. Knowing all this, it brings me to the conclusion that... So now I have two options. I have no choice but to believe them, or two, these girls have lost it. Well, after seeing a giant monster, I'm pretty sure migraines you don't usually just see monsters. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna have to believe them. As crazy as all this sounds, I can't really deny the evidence before me. That monster was definitely real and I have no reason to doubt these girls who destroyed that thing right before my eyes. 
Okay, so what happens now? Hmm. Well, now that the shadows have gotten more aggressive, I really don't think we can go back to our old job of watching you from afar. We're really lucky to just barely catch that thing just now, after all. Somehow I don't like the sound of that or what it might imply. At all. So we'll be parting ways for now, but expect us to keep to be keeping an extremely close eye from on you from now on, okay? Bye bye for now. And they just disappear. <laughs> she gives me a wink and a wave before taking off in the other direction. Her less enthused partner simply turns her head from me with one last humph before following after her. I was soon left completely alone within the street, where just moments ago my entire world has been spun on its head. I did all of that just happen? Ah jeez, all of this will have to wait for later though. Right now, I have to focus on the bigger issue, being late for school. I break into a sprint as I try to make up for lost time, all while hoping that I'll never run into those two again. <laughs> Somehow I just barely make it to class. It was a photo finish through the door right as the bell rang, but I made it! Taking a moment to catch my breath, I drag myself over to the desk, the teacher arriving almost seconds after I collapsed into the chair. Too close! None of the other students seem too bothered by my late entrance, though. At this point, maybe this is what they expect of me anyway. I've been pretty late at times, even missing the bell entirely some days. Mostly due to sleeping, and at least this time I had an actual reason for cutting it so close. However, after what happened earlier, I think it's going to be impossible for me to focus on the lesson. I'm beginning to wonder if I'll get an explanation for whatever the heck that was that just happened. Impossibly tall creatures? Girls wielding magic weapons? No matter how I look at it, my brain refuses to accept it as reality. It goes against everything I know. I scrub through my hair, a faint headache still ringing at the back of my head. Being lucky enough to have a seat situated by the window, I let my gaze wander out, my eyes vacant as I stare into the clear blue sky. My teacher is doing his usual morning speech, no doubt talking about the upcoming events for his school, but his words are just a dull mumble in my ears. My mind miles away. Those girls knew me by name, and no matter how far I delve back through my memories, it's clear I've never seen them in my life. At least I don't think I've seen them before. I think hard. Maybe too hard to the point my eyes begin to strain. Nope. Nothing. I can't recall a single thing that might let shed light on this. Defeated for now, I tune back into the classroom whilst keeping my sights set on the sky, the teacher's voice becoming clear once more. Teacher, now, uh, I know it's a bit sudden, but as of today, we have two transfer students that will be joining our class. Transfer students? At this time of year? It's a bit late to be joining, don't you think? Even the teacher sounds confused as he announces them. And not just one, but two? Why do I get the feeling there's something off about this? Almost as if it's tied into what happened earlier? Ha. Huh. No. It couldn't be. Teacher, I'd like you all to make them feel welcome as they transition in. Uh, what did you say your names were? I'm Sayaka. It's nice to meet you all. I hope we can all get along. Dot 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 dot. I bolt upright in my seat, my head snapping towards the front of the classroom. That upbeat voice. Is it really? Sure enough, two girls I never thought I'd see again are stood before me. In my school. In my classroom, no less. Wearing the school's official uniform. The cheerful one, uh, Sayaka buys ba oh my gosh. Sayaka bows politely to the class, flashing me a grin as her eyes pass over me. What? What is this? The other girl is less courteous, her arms crossed and her brow furrowed. She doesn't look pleased to be here at all. Her gaze passes over me too, but rather than a smile, she gives me a nasty glare. Is she blaming me for this? It sure feels like it. Sayaka, the grumpy one beside me here is Hikari. Go on, say hi. Hey, hey, don't. Sayaka gives her a playful push as she stumbles to the center of the classroom. Everyone's eyes upon her. She looks like she's at loss for her words. Her mouth opening and closing her face gradually goes red. I guess she doesn't cope while under the spotlight. I'm Hikari. Nice to meet you. <laughs> she off into a murmur before spinning on her heel and storming her way back to Sayaka, practically hiding behind her. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? Hikari simmers with silent rage, her hands pulled up into tight fists, practically shaking. 
I'm sure if she wasn't in a classroom full of people, things might have gone violent here. With their introductions over, the teacher motions for them to take their seats. Wait a second. Alan just realized where the only spare seats in the classroom are. One of them is right behind me with a window view too, and the other is to my right. So that means they'll both be sitting next to me. Actually, this is pretty convenient. I can finally ask them just what the heck they think they're doing. Sayaka, with a spring in her step, waltzes towards the desk behind me. Hikari stomps her way over and takes the other desk. I lean out from my desk to try and catch their attention, but I'm cut short by the teacher who resumes whatever it is he was talking about before. Damn it. I don't want to get in trouble for talking during class. I'll have to wait until the break. That's two lessons away, though, which is practically an eternity. I swing back around to the front of my desk. I can't do anything right now, so I'll just pay attention to the teacher and our- No! How can I pay attention to anything when two magical girls are sitting near me? I want answers now. Jumping my fingers against the desk as the teacher continues to drone on, I try to think of a way around this. It's better we don't speak during class, so... Ah, of course, it's so obvious. I dig into my school bag and pull out my notebook and pencil. I'll just pass them a note. Simple and silent. It's a bit of an immature means of communicating, I'll admit, but I'm desperate here. I scribble down my message. What are you guys doing here? I may as well get straight to the point. I tear the page out, almost ripping it in half the process. In the process, only one question is left. Who do I give this note to? Um, Sayaka or Hikari? Which one should I do it? Pray? Probably Sayaka. Sayaka? I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, well, it's harder. Well, it's going to be harder to pass a note to someone directly behind me without looking too suspicious. I get the feeling Sayak might actually want to respond. Yeah. Kicking back in my chair, lean backwards in the note. Slip the note onto her desk, whilst, whilst keeping my eyes forward as if I were a good student was actually paying attention to the lesson at hand. At least I think I managed to hear the note. After a minute or two of twiddling my thumbs, I began to lose faith in my plan. Maybe this was... Something suddenly taps my shoulder, the same page I had torn out from my pad before floating down to my desk. SUCCESS! Written below my hastily scrawled, just barely legible message is one in far neater handwriting and accompanied by a smiley face. We're here to protect you, silly! Protect me? Right. I remember saying something about them being my guardian angels and that they'd be keeping a closer eye on me, but this is ridiculous. I scribble down my reply writing so fast I have to cross out a word several times before I finally get it right. Okay, so I get that part, but do you really need to be this close? How did you guys even manage to get enrolled? Did you forget how close you were to being chomped on this morning? We're not gonna let that happen again. As for how we got in, well, let's just say we can be very persuasive. <laughs> Who actually writes eh Uh, whatever. At least she gave me an answer. Somewhat. Now that I think about it, the teacher did look a little confused as he introduced them. I'm guessing they wormed their way into here with whatever magic powers they have. That's a bit scary, actually. Magic. I use that word so casually. Am I just accepting its existence now? I guess given the evidence, it's a bit hard not to, but I'm still going to remain skeptical. The first lesson of the day goes on at an agonizingly slow pace. I can't focus on a thing no matter how hard I try. After what it seems like an eternity, the bell finally rings, announcing the end of the lesson. There's still another lesson to go before break time, though. This is what makes it impossible to talk with the girls, especially since the next lesson is P.E., where the boys and girls are separated. Aww. Ugh, why is life so complicated? Alright guys, that is our first part of our Secure Angels playthrough. So far I'm not seeing why the game's banned, but maybe we'll find out later. The game's pretty interesting so far. The story's pretty interesting. Something that I would watch if it were actually like an anime, aside from a visual novel. But, you know. Either way, it's a pretty neat game so far, and I'm really enjoying it. I hope you guys are too. Um, definitely be something that would probably be better to more like listen to, kind of like a audio novel type thing. Um, but yeah, anyways, if you guys uh, 
enjoy this video i'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a like and subscribed and commented down below if you guys know about this game at all maybe you guys have played it or seen it before anywhere else um yeah i will see you guys next time